Good morning. God bless you. Thank you, Jesus, for this another Sunday morning. Praise God. And I hope you are thankful, too, that he woke you up this Sunday. Praise God. Another Sunday. Praise God. Anyway, I want to talk a little bit about um, a, va a valley of dry bones. You know, I was talking to uh, somebody I know. You know, he's always, uh, you know, got this habit. Because I know what he be ha having this drinking habit because he got a drinking problem, you know. And I just know the little movement that he be making. I be all like, you know, you tell your body that no alcohol today. No alcohol in your body today in Jesus' name. You know, you have to talk to that body. You know, tell it by using control that it's not none of that's not going in you today or no other day. Praise God. So he just look. And uh, he just, mmm, do I laugh? I said, mmm, you just talk to that body. Tell that body, no, 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 not today, not no day. You're going to be in control of your body. Praise God. Anyway, I'm going to read out here Ezekiel's, Ezekiel's uh, chapter 37. I'm starting with verse 1. It says, The Lord took hold of me, and I was carried away by the Spirit of the Lord to a valley filled with bones. He led me around among the bones that covered the valley floor. They were scattered everywhere across the ground and were completely dried out. Then he asked me, Son of man, can these bones become living before, I mean, can these bones become living peoples again? O sovereign Lord, I reply, you alone know the answer to that. Then he said to me, Speak your prophet's message to those, to these bones, and, and say, Dry bones, listen to the word of the Lord. This is what the sovereign Lord says. Look, look, I am going to put grief into you and make you live again. I will put flesh and muscles on you and cover you with skin. I will put grief into you and you will come to life. Then you will know that I am the Lord. That's also in John chapter 20 chapter 20 verse 20 says, so I spoke this message just as he told me suddenly as I spoke there was a rattling noise all across the valley the bones of each body came together and attached themselves as complete skeleton skeleton then as I walk, as I watch muscles and flesh form over the bone, then skin formed to cover their bodies, but they still had no breath in them. Then he said to me, speak a prophet message to the wind, son of man, speak a prophet message and say, this is what the servant Lord says, come, O grip, O, O, O breath from the four winds breath into these dead bodies so they may live again. So I spoke the message as he commanded me and breath came into the body. Then all came to life and stood up on their feet a great army. Then he said to me, Son of man, these bones represent the people of Israel. They are they are saying, we have become old dry bones. All hope is gone. Our nation is finished. Therefore, the prophecy to them and say, this is what the sovereign Lord will say. O oh, my people, I will open my graves of excel and cause you to rise again. Then I will bring you back to the land of Israel. When this happens, O oh, my people, you know, you will know that I am the Lord. I will put my spirit in you and you will live again and return home to your own land then you will know that the Lord you know that I the Lord has spoken I have done what I said yes the Lord has spoken that's also in Joel uh, chapter 2 verse uh, 28 to 29 also it says again a message came a message came to me from the Lord let me just break this down a little bit the message came to me from the Lord son of man 
take a piece of wood and crave on it. These words this represent Judah and its ally tribes. Then take another piece and crave these words on it. This represents Ephraim and the northern tribe of Israel. Now hold them together in your hand as if they were one piece of wood. When your people ask you what your action means, say to them, this is what the Severn Lord says. I will take Ephraim and the northern tribe and join them to Judah. I will make them one piece of wood in my hand. That's also in Hosea chapter 1 verse 11. It says, then hold out the pieces of wood you have inscribed so the people can see them and give them you know this message from the seven lords I will gather the people of Israel from among the nation I will bring them home to their land to their own land from the places where they have been scattered I will unify them into the nation on the mountain of Israel one king will rule them all them all no longer will they be divided into two nations or into you know or into two kingdoms. They will never again pollute themselves with their idols and real image and rebellion, for I will save them from their sinful backside sliding. I will cleanse them, then they will truly be my people, and I will be their God. My servant David will be their kings and they will have only one shepherd. They will obey my regulation and be careful to keep my decrees. They will live in the land I gave my servant Jacob, the land where their ancestors live. They and, the, their, they and their children and their grandchildren after them will live there forever, generation after generation. And my servant David will be their princes before, I mean forever. And I will make a covenant of peace with them, an everlasting covenant. I will give them their land and increase their numbers and I will put my temple among them forever. I will make my home among them. I will be their gods and they will be my peoples. And, they, and when they, and when my temple is among them, Forever the nation will know that I am the Lord who makes Israel holy. That's also a second Corinthians chapter six, verse sixteen. Praise God. God bless you and God keep you and you know as I always say, you know, he talking about dry bones and everything and you know, like I said, I know somebody you know, I know somebody real good, you know, and they they just you know they're alcoholic. They they like to drink, you know, and also he yeah, have bad liver, so it's like, you know, it's basically he don't care. He don't care about living. I mean, at one time, I remember he said he was in church, you know, but he wasn't in the Word. Going to church and being in the Word are two different things. You know, he just stopped going to church. He just, he just like, he just, just started giving up on God. He, Dan here, just the amount of people say, give it up on himself. Because without God, you're dead anyway. So, you know, he got this alcohol, he got this alcohol problem. You know, I uh, talk to him every now and then, and see him every now and then, you know, see how he's doing, might take him to the store or something like that, you know, you know, see how he's doing everything, you know, and still I, I tell him about the word, I tell him nothing works without God, and I tell him, you know, I said, when you get that craving, you had that craving, then you just talk, talk to your body, tell, you, tell your body, no, the devil want to kill you, and, and you know already, that he want to destroy you, that's what the devil's uh, job to do, to kill you, you know, steal and destroy. And I'm, you know, tell him about that, you know, let me see my uh, YouTube, and you know, and let them hear what I'm saying, you know, then I read to them on the, you know, read, you know, with them, you know, the Bible, what the Bible says, what the book say, and, you know, he's got this, this, this habit, it's like, if you want, you, if you I said, if you want to help, you know, if you want to help, you know, get help, you don't want, if you don't want to help, you know, you're not going to go, uh, well, you don't want help if you don't want trying to get help, if you're not trying to stop to do these bad habits, bad things, whatever that you're doing, you're not, you know, you're not trying to help yourself, first of all. I mean, nobody can't make you stop, you know, I mean, you have to, you know, know that it's not good for your body. And, um, you know, by you having this situation going on, and I'll be like seeing them, I'm like, I already know that look, I already know that craving, that, 
you know, the little, the, the little moves that he do. I say, you tell that, you tell that, your body, you tell that alcohol, no, no. You take control of your own body, tell that, tell that, tell that, tell that, tell that pause and then no. Not today, not no day, you're going to live. And you're going to live for Christ Jesus, in Jesus' name. And I was telling him, you know, these things. He, you know, started laughing a little bit. I'm like, really? Really? You have to take control of your body. You want to stop drinking? You know, you got to take action. Knowing that God, he will save you. He will heal you. No matter what the doctor say, you know, he will heal you. If you want, if you want to live, you know, come to God. Do it his way. Do it his word. Get in the word and do, you know, what he has for you to do. Because he wants to live. He don't want you to die. He don't want to kill you. There ain't never, the devil trying to take you out before time. Here you is, 56 years old, you know, you're young. You're still young. You know, the devil trying to take you out before your time. God's trying to give you life within him. You know, he put me here for a reason to tell you about the word of God and his way of life. You know, this way of, uh, he wants you to live the good life. You're not destroying yourself, you know, drinking all alcohol and all this and alcohol and taking B.C. I said, you know, ain't taking B.C.'s. B.C., you taking B.C., he using B.C.'s as a drug, not B.C.'s to take for like, uh, just like a pain reliever. You know, actually taking B.C.'s, uh, if it's not no pain, so that's basically using B.C.'s, you know, for drug. You know, you get hung on uh, drug, these, these medication, these uh, pills, you're taking them and you're using them as a drug. You know, they're not using them as a pain pill. You know, but I say, this is your pain pill right here. Get in the world of God and tell God to release that pain. Remove that pain that you never can get them BC and whatever, title all three, number one, two, three, whatever. You know, you turn to God and tell ask God to release that pain. You know, get all that medication. You're making the you making the drug happen when you take it when you're not paying it. You can't it become a drug prescription because you're using the like drug. You know, you know, tell them these things, you know, so I just pray God, you know, so I mean I might be in pain sometimes, but I know God, I know my God, he will leave. Release this pain. I ain't got to go through no medication. You know, I already know what it is. The devil's trying to, the devil wants you in pain. When you go to God and you just speak them things and be not to throw their word, God will remove it. God will fix it. And Jesus' name, yes, he will if you believe. And I will, you know, be talking to him and everything. Believe. Do you believe in God? You believe that he woke you up this morning? You can't get up yourself and go to work. You think, you know, you think you're giving your own self strength? I don't think so. God give you the ability and the strength to get up and Go to work and do what you need to do. Start doing your way. You know, you're still blessed. You're still here. And you still got a chance to get in the world and do the will of God for your life. You know, you know, get them bones alive. Get them bones stepping with the right word with Jesus. Praise God. God bless you all. I just want to just share that with you because I know somebody, you know, I mean, I know, I mean, I've been around. I grew up around, you know, drugs and people use drugs and alcohol and all this. So I know how it affects people. You know, my own family, you know, little coming up, they, sister and brother, my mother, I mean, you the drugs, so I already know how I fit. You know, by me being a seventh child, it's like everybody else uh, own stuff, they doing this, they doing that, but like, I don't know what I mean by the seventh child, it's like me, it's like it's, I can just try something, but I'm not, you know, like I said, I, I never was hooked. I tried uh, alcohol, drinking and all, I don't even drink. I don't even drink on no occasion. I don't even drink wine. I don't care if it is my birthday, whatever, you know, birthday or any holiday, whatever. I just don't drink. I don't drink no wine or nothing, you know, when it comes to that. You know, I just, I just don't. I mean, I try it. I don't like it. You know, they like, well, wine ain't going to hurt. Maybe it, don't, maybe it won't hurt. I just don't like it. I try it. I don't like it. I won't even touch none of that beer, none of that. You know, I'm like, you know, I can... You know, act crazy with all, all that. I can act stupid and funny with all, all that. I can laugh, you know, but I even done funny with all, all that making me do it. I can speak my mind, tell my mind, tell somebody off like it is. I ain't got to say the alcohol made me go off. So usually when people drink alcohol and they get drunk and they get to telling you off or telling somebody else or cussing somebody else, they really mean what they say. They didn't want to use one of those alcohol. No, it wasn't alcohol. That was you. You know, sometimes you really, you really speak. You really speak the truth when you drinking and drunk. The truth really come out when you be drinking. There ain't no alcohol. That's you. You know what you're doing. You know what you're saying. So I don't need all that. I can speak my mind with all, all that. I can tell the truth without all that. You know, praise God. But I just thank you, Jesus. But I wouldn't hook on none of that. I just thank you, Jesus. But the one that are do have the issue and everything, you know, you can turn to God. Ask God to help you deliver you from that situation. You know, praise God.
you know, he would do. If you want to change, nothing change till you change. When you want to change, you get sick and tired of living your life and wasting money on whatever crack or whatever, weed or whatever, you, that they, whatever, some areas, whatever, state, whatever, but made it legal for weed, for, uh, you know, for medication or you, whatever. You know, this is the only medication that I need. This is my weed. This is my weed right here. This is my cocaine. This is my alcohol. This is my wine, whiskey, whatever you want to call it. This is about cigarette. This is all here. This is right here. This is for me. This is my get high. This is my drunk. I'm going to get drunk for Jesus. I'm staying the word and do the will of God. This is what I'm, you know, this is my get high today. I'm going to get high. I'm going to stay high all week long. Praise God and the word of God. Praise God. This is the best high for me. You know, you need to try sometime. Let's get high together. Let's get high in the word. Praise God. Hallelujah. We can get drunk together right here in the word. Praise God. Hallelujah. But anyway, I thank you for tuning on and watching once again. I want to read about uh, eternal life here. You know, because God wants to have uh, eternal life. He don't want us to uh, be all destroyed and having all these crazy stuff all over our body. And we, you know, trying to make ourselves feel good or we be in so much pain. That's still not going to cover the, uh, the pain by, you know, using drugs or uh, drinking and all this stuff. It's still you should make, you, make yourself look ugly and stupid, <laughs> you know. Make yourself look all terrible. You know, already terrible. Without God, it's already terrible anyway. But making stuff worse. Adding on worse to the issues. Worse on top of worse. Bad on top of bad. Even worse. Anyway, I'm going to read here. It says, For I know that my Redeemer lives, and that he shall stand at the latter day upon the earth. Who am I shall see for myself, and my eyes shall behold, and not another through my wrens be consumed with within me for I who for whosoever shall save his life shall lose it and whosoever will lose his life for my sake shall find it for the son of man shall come in the glory of his father with his angels and then he shall reward every man according to his work for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For the wage of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. And this is the record that God hath given to us eternal life. And this life is in his Son. And there, and there shall be no night there, and they need no candles, neither light of the sun for the Lord God giveth light and they shall rend forever and ever praise God and I read uh, uh, the book of Job chapter 19 chapter 19 verse 25 and verse 27 Matthew chapter 16 verse 25 and 27 John chapter 3 and verse 16 Romans chapter 6, verse 23, verse John chapter 5, verse 11, and Revelation chapter 22, verse 5. Praise God. And God bless you and God keep you. Somebody may be saying, they say, why are you around alcohol? Why are you be around somebody that's drinking? And why are you around this? Why are you around that? You know, why not be around it? God loves, God of, you know, you know, help love the sinners. You know, of course, he don't want to, uh, to be in that situation and have two two together, being married together like that. No, he, but he still loves sinners. Jesus loves the sinners, so why can't I still love a sinner? I still love him, but I, you know, but it's just two. It's just two different things, you know. See, I'm like, I, I'm not going. It's not like I'm going to be with him. It's not like I'm finna go get married to him or none of that. You none of that's not involved. But you know, but what I like about you know the people who I know that's not saved. Which is a sin, but they still sin and not their life not changed around everything yet. But you know, but I like about them is they keep it real. They ain't got nothing to hide. They they sell. You know, they 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 some drink, some smoke cigarettes, whatever. You know, a lot of them they lie. You know, they uh, sleeping around. They players. They doing all this crazy stuff. You know, but but they keep it real. It's all that's wrong. But at least I know what they doing. They ain't got nothing to hide. They like got got like that open. That's that say say who that's who they are. But that's not who they are. That's not who God wants them to be. But you know, 
they keep it real like that, you know. Then these so-called supposed to be believers and Christians, you know, they act like they ain't done, never done nothing wrong. They look at you funny like they don't have no kind of issues in their life. You know, hiding and playing these secretly games, you know. It's like they're not keeping it real. So therefore, you know, at least I know some unsaved folks. At least I know they're keeping it real. That's why I can communicate and talk with them. At the same time, I tell them about the Word of God. They know who I am in Christ Jesus. They know ain't nothing going to happen, you know, for the relationship or something like that. They know all oh, that's not going to happen with me, not with them. Anyway, so they already know me. And they know where I stand. And I know, you know, how they are too. I and mean, I know good and bad don't mix. But, you know, I know them. I know these people. I know them a whole lot, you know. But I'm like, you know, it's like... The least I can communicate with them, I can talk to them, they keep it real. They ain't got to play no high go see, no praise the Lord and all this and that thing. They doing something stupid. I ain't got to worry about them because I already know how they are. That's why, you know, I talk to them at the same time. I tell them about the Word of God, but I still pray for them. Praise God, you know, all the time. You know, they keep it real all the time because they're not ready. If they be honest, I'm not ready yet. You know, can't make somebody be ready, but you know. I mean, that's their life, that's their choice. You know, I tell them that you want to live good, you want good or bad, don't mix. You want the good life, or you want the bad life. They want to just, you know, choose where they want to, you know, choose, and that's on them. I'm going to live right. I'm going to stay on the right path. I got to do what God say do. You know, I still got to be good. You know, I might not like what they do. You know, that's their life. I'm going to like it. But, you know, I ain't got to deal with it. I ain't got to be around it neither. But, you know, I'm be around the courage. I'm still talking about the word God to them. You know, I still love them. I might not like what they do, but I still got to love what God said love, you know, anyway, love everybody. But, you know, it ain't like I got to go jump in bed with them and all this kind of stuff. None of that's happening. That's a no-no anyway for me. You know, I still got to do what's right. I still got to do what God said do. You know, praise God. But anyway, I'm praying for each and every last one of you. God bless you and God keep you. Thank you, Father, pray for the Lord that's watching. God bless you. God keep you. Pray, Lord, to be with you and keep you and lead you and guide you and strengthen you. In every area of your life, whether you're about to go to the house of the Lord, uh, maybe you just chill and relax for the day, I just pray the Lord to be with you and give you strength in every area of your life. And I pray you will just live in the light and not in the dark and do what he called you and wants you to do in Jesus' name. Glory be to God. God bless you and your family in Jesus' name. And I rebuke every demon, every devil trying to hold you back, trying to stop you. I rebuke every sickness right now, whatever the doctor said, whatever bad report the doctor said, whatever it is, I pray the Lord just, you know, heal you right where you are. Whatever, whatever area where you sick at, you might have an alcohol, uh, might be an alcohol problem or a drug problem, whatever, just a lying problem, just lie, 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 I don't know what it is. I pray the Lord just help you in that area, deliver you, deliver you in Jesus' name for you to be right, become right. Within him in Jesus' name, glory be to God. I just pray you to take care of your life, take care of your body, take care of your soul, your spirit, your mind within Jesus Christ and live the way he wants you to live in Jesus' name. Glory be to God. Because I know the devil is here to kill, steal, and destroy. And you want to have life within Jesus Christ. Glory be to God. God bless you and God keep you. And I pray no weapon formed against you shall prosper in Jesus' name. Glory be to God. In Jesus' name I pray. God bless you. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen, amen, amen. And anyway, God bless you all. And God keep you, I mean, you know, give God some praise and thank you, know, because trouble don't always last. You know, bad things don't always last neither. You know, I'm the one I serve a big God that he has changed every situation around. It might not be in certain situations. Everybody else may have maybe different things, you know, but praise God. He know, he know, he going to work it out for the better. Praise God. God bless you. Just don't stop. Don't give up. Just keep on pressing. Keep on pressing no matter what it looks like. You know, just getting that book, getting the word. So God loves you. He cares for you. He wants you to have life within him. Praise God. Keep your joy today. Every day. Keep your joy and have a blessed Sunday. Have a blessed day. You know, in the world of God. Love someone. You know, tell somebody about your testimony. You know, tell them how, you know, how great God is. How awesome God is. Because he is awesome. I know I serve an awesome God. Praise God. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Until next time, God bless you. Be good. Love one another. In Jesus' name. Amen. See you next time. Remember, God love you. And so do I. Take care.